well, there have been some further developments for Madagascar Oil uh, in the last 24 hours. They've actually appointed an investment bank, Jefferies, to search out a strategic partner to help to develop the Simaruru uh, site that they have on the island of Madagascar. We're joined now by the CEO of Madagascar Oil, Robert Estill. Um, this is quite a significant stage in what is actually quite a, 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 a protracted process of, of actually turning the company around. Yeah, Nigel, I appreciate you having me here. You know, Simiru is a large asset for us. You know, we have over 1.7 billion barrels of oil contingent resource uh, in place, and very rarely do you have a company our size with that much of a resource. It's all onshore. It's relatively shallow, about a couple hundred meters to drill these wells, so they're very low-cost wells. So as we look at Madagascar, we just got our development plan approval in April 2015. Now it's time to move on to the development of the asset. And in order to do that, we want to have the right strategic partner, and that's why we brought on Jefferies. Yeah. And so what can you actually offer? I mean, what's, what's the pitch then that the Jefferies is going to be using to get his partners on board? Because, you know, in a sort of $60 world, uh, it's, it, you know, and you'll be able to get it out at, I don't know, what, you know, what the costings are. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a hard sell. How do you sell it? Well, you know, I used to be the head of strategy and portfolio for Marathon Oil. I always had to look at these different portfolio options and options for different investments globally for us as well as others. I think what Madagascar offers, one, again, it's a large resource. When companies are looking for reserve replacements or looking for new finds, this is all onshore. Our costs, as you will see in our presentation that's online, are in about the $40 to $50 range uh, for our break-even costs for this, this project. Uh, and you extrapolate that over to... We estimate about $2.6 billion of NPV-10 uh, on our base case, and it has a lot of flexibility because this is a, primarily a drilling operation, and we'll be drilling hundreds of wells uh, over time. Yeah. So uh, what, are you, what are you hoping to get? I mean, what, what will a prospective partner bring to the table? Well, we're looking at a range of partners, and I think, you know, uh, we're looking all the way from uh, just financial partners, or we'll actually execute the project ourselves to bring in a right uh, oil and gas partner or either oil service partner. We've had people talk to us about drilling our wells in return for X. We've had pipeline companies talk to us about developing our pipeline in return for a tolling arrangement or something else like that. So we're going to look at how we bring that combination of partners in that best fits the development of this asset. Now, it's, it's important to, to note that this is the first production license for heavy oil, and you really are the expert in this challenging field. Tell us a bit more about you know, what you're bringing to it and, and what you see as the challenges. Yeah, you know what, I, I uh, came on to Madagascar Oil in January and uh, previously you know, I've worked 30 years in the industry and, and two of the, the occasions I worked at the two largest thermal operations in the world, one being Indonesia in Dury, uh, where we ramped up to over 300,000 barrels a day uh, in that operation. And the other one being in the uh, Kern River area for, of California, working in Kern River and the other fields that are in Southern California. Both of the Kern River and Dury both produce over two billion barrels. So we're hoping to do some of the similar type development learnings that we had. Again, this is not new technology and apply them at semi rural. And our challenges are, you know, there's a lack of infrastructure in the, in the country. So we've got to, to develop that and work with, uh, we're working with the IFC, we're working with the World Bank, going to try to get them to come in on this too to help with some of the infrastructure challenges that yeah. are out there. So, so it's not just, just the, 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 the petrol and gas, you know, petrol dollars, it's also getting the infrastructure in place, investing for the long term. And also, and because of your, your previous role uh, as, you know, in charge of social responsibility at Marathon, um, what are you doing as a new CEO coming in to make sure that Madagascar is a socially responsible company? Well, there's a lot that I can help add. You know, I did a lot of work with the EITI before Madagascar had just signed up for that. So we're active participants as a company in doing that. Uh, as well, the country has a lot of biodiversity. They have a lot of one-of-a-kind things in, in the country. Uh, we put in place programs that really tackle education, health, the environment, and we've partnered with the government on these uh, and got great relations. And so throughout our, our development, uh, we're developing things towards IFC standards. So we're putting all those things in place that normally you may not find at a smaller company.
Okay. Well, so a, a lot going to be happening in, in coming months. So good luck. Robert well, Estill, thank you, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it, Nigel.